Hey, my friends, welcome back to the Pop Culture Cafe. I am Huck, and we are almost done uh, plowing through, you know it here, this old Hitchcock 15 movie set. Uh, the last one on deck here is Frenzy. That is the last unwatched Hitchcock. Uh, I haven't seen any of these except for Psycho, so I'm saving that one for last. But here it is, Frenzy. Uh, yes, yeah, so what did I think of Frenzy? All right, gang, now before we jump into this very last unseen Hitchcock review of Frenzy, do me a favor. If you're new to my channel and you've been enjoying all of these, I have committed to watching all of these Hitchcock films, man. 15, I was, you know, I could have bailed any time, but I didn't. I hung in there. Even this one, I was like, ah, one more left. I just got to get through it. So let's go. So anyway, if you've been uh, enjoying these and all the other content I put out on my channel, I do all kinds of fun stuff here. We do morning shows, trivia shows, uh, out and about Blu-ray hunts, collection updates, all that kind of cool stuff. If that is your jam, uh, not to mention these reviews. So get on down there and hit like and subscribe. And don't forget to hit that notification bell so you get notified the next time I do another one of these awesome reviews i mean you know there's one more coming psycho so yeah there you go so here we go with frenzy uh okay so frenzy of course is a film directed by alfred hitchcock in 1972 and it stars john finch as richard blaney barbara lee hunt as brenda blaney barry foster as robert rusk and massey as Babs Milligan, and Alec McCowan as the Chief Inspector Tim Oxford. So the film starts off with two, our two characters, Richard and Babs. They're, they're a couple now. Now Richard is divorced from his, uh, from his wife, Brenda. That's why they still have the same last name, uh, but they have been separated for like a year. And this guy's kind of down on his luck. He's lost his job. He doesn't have much money, not really a place to hang. And, uh, and it starts with him coping with that and while he's trying to get his life in order he comes across his buddy uh, that's the one played by Barry Foster uh, Rusk and he owns a, a, a market area like a fruit stand kind of thing and apparently he's doing very well and he tries to offer him a little money to get by and they seem like really good buds well as the plot continues along you come to find out that there's all kinds of mysterious things going on there is a they call it the necktie strangler is on the loose and he's out there killing women with his necktie and eventually richard blaney becomes the main suspect because he seems to be around all the women that keep getting killed and they're, they're kind of graphic too because it's a, a rape and murder by strangulation with this tie and uh and you really uh, like hitch doesn't hold back there's one in particular where once we learn who the actual murderer is uh, and he goes into um, his ex-wife's place of business that's the character brenda blaney so barry foster does a really good job being the the baddie in this film and it's a very uncomfortable scene to watch i even watched the making of afterwards and the actors even said yeah it was really like tough to get through that it was a three-day shoot um but you know you got to have these scenes to to move it forward so you can imagine what the actors have to go through when they have to do these scenes together uh but anyway so this is when you realize that rusk is really the bad guy in this film uh, but but the evidence still all points to richard so that's when the chief inspector character has to go out there and search for him because uh, after Rusk had killed Brenda and left, uh, shortly thereafter, um, Richard goes in to see her, but he goes and the door's locked and he can't get in and he leaves. And as he leaves, the secretary is coming back from a lunch break and sees him go down the alley. And so, of course, she puts two and two together and thinks he's the murderer because the timing was perfect and she sees the body right after he leaves. And then that's when everything keeps getting uh, pigeonholed to him as the necktie murderer. So, uh, so the film has a nice little progression from there about how he keeps getting in deeper and deeper and all the evidence really just points to him to him and never gets to rusk only rusk makes a little mistake because he takes out one more victim and um he has this little pin that he has right on his jacket because he's a hoi hall guy he's got his little initial there well the pin comes off and ends up in the hand of one of the the girl's body the corpses she's holding it so he has to like go back and get that body of course he drops the body in this big old like truck that's filled with sacks of potatoes and he puts her in a potato sack so you know he could just disguise her and be done with her but as he's going back to the body to find that thing he gets trapped in the truck so 
as things like that start to happen, then things maybe start to unravel just a little bit, uh, complicating the scenario. But Richard is still the one to blame. So the, the frustration you're feeling is, oh man, like, look at this guy. He's such a bad dude and he's still getting away with everything. So in classic Hitch fashion, you know, if you check this out, you just have to see how all this unravels. How, how do they, they deal with Rusk and how do they deal with um, Richard? How do they, you know, deal with all the dead girls and how they piece it all together? Uh, but there is a sidebar to all this. While all these horrific murders are happening, uh, the, the chief inspector's wife is kind of this comic character because for whatever reason, and it's kind of, brilliant because it's kind of a dark film his wife has taken up this culinary thing because she thinks that her cooking is boring and so there are scenes like that that it's in the at the chief inspector's house because he's thinking about you know who did it and, and that he put you know uh, uh, that he put richard away and 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 but he remembers something that richard said as he was being taken away he was screaming it's rusk and uh, i'll get you you know but while, while he's talking to his wife about all this, she's serving him some of the most hideous culinary treats. <laughs> and they're like hard for him to eat, and they're, but they're talking about serious stuff. So it's, you know, Hitch always finds a way to weave humor into his, into his films. So those scenes are definitely the ones that hold the most humor in this film. Uh, now, uh, I will say another thing about the casting. Again, Torn Curtain with Paul Newman and Julie Andrews seems to be the last all-star studded film that Hitch directed because right after that, so like, you know, when we pull this thing open, so there was, there was Topaz, right? And Topaz had relatively unknown people. Uh, and then Frenzy, also very, very unknown cast, no stars in this at, at, at whatsoever. And then the family, when family plot, you could argue had some stars, but we kind of know them as stars now, like Bruce Dern and William Devane. But back in the day, still, it was no Paul Newman and Julie Andrews. So his last three films are very unstar studded, but they all do a really good job, um, you know, in this film. So interesting that that's how he, he finishes up his filmography is with not stars, but just good character actors. All right, guys, that is going to do it for now. That is my review for Frenzy. If you enjoyed it, please do me a favor and get on down there and hit like and subscribe and smack that notification bell so you get notified the next time I do my next video. One more left, y'all. It's Psycho, and it's coming up. So till next time, go watch some Hitch.